Hello everyone, this is Abul Murinathan T, Assistant Professor from Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. The topic that we are going to see today is Turbine Blade Cooling. The basic components of a gas turbine engine is diffuser, compressor, combustion chamber and a turbine. In the Brayton cycle, we can see the highest temperature is in the turbine inlet temperature. So, in order to maintain high operating temperature with turbine materials that are available in the market, a system of turbine blade cooling has to be implemented. So, it is done by two methods. One is air cooling, the other one is liquid cooling based upon the fluid that is used. So based upon the design of the blade and location of the blade, a combination of methods will be used. We will see what are these uh, types of methods and combination of methods in the same video. So here we can see there are uh, three images of a turbine blade and each of them showing the passages and the holes on the surfaces of the turbine blade through which air will be travelling and on the left hand topmost corner you can see that image the first image there is a green section in that green section here you can notice that is the section through which air enters into the blade in a rotor blade okay. and on the right hand side images the cut section of the blade is being displayed where air will be entering in this direction it will travelling into the passage and it will be leaving the blade from the holes on the surface so you can see this passage arrangement in this third diagram how it has been arranged So in liquid cooling, the classification goes on like external cooling and internal cooling and in external cooling there is only one method called spray cooling and in internal cooling there are two types called forced convection and free convection and in free convection it is open and closed. So coming back to spray cooling, the spray cooling method an external liquid is being sprayed on the blade in order to cool the blade and in internal cooling the liquid is forced into the blade for forced convection and in free convection it is simply let into the blade in a free manner. In a liquid cooling one of the things that is uh, important to notice is that a separate liquid has to be used for cooling this uh, blade. So we have to carry a separate liquid in a separate container and we have to maintain a separate system which may increase the weight of the engine. So predominant air cooling method. In air cooling also there are two types external and internal cooling and in external cooling Film cooling and transpiration cooling and internal cooling, convection cooling and impingement cooling are the methods. So external cooling in the sense it cools the external surface of the blade and internal cooling in the sense cools the internal surface of the blade with the help of those passages. So here is the internal cooling passage. Coolant air is entered into the blade and travels from the root into the passages and according to this diagram it travels in a certain pattern through the passages and it hits at this point, it hits the leading edge of the blade and that uh, type is known as impingement cooling. Impingement the word means hitting. So at the leading edge the internal cooling method used is impingement cooling. 
and on the top you can see at the cross section after impingement this air is being let out on the surface of uh, the blade on the external surface of the blade that is known as film cooling which means it forms a thin film of uh, cold air over that external surfaces so here at the trailing edge one can notice the thickness of the blade is very very small so it is very difficult to manufacture a passage or design a passage inside this blade the machining process is very difficult so what they will do is they will go for pin pin cooling or fusion cooling here so this is an elaborate figure of a impingement cooling and film cooling you can see the passage through which the air is entering here and after the air has entered the cooling passage it is made to impinge the internal surface of the leading edge of the blade so that is where impingement is working and here you can see in the film cooling coolant gas enters into the bottom of the blade and some of the air is sent over the external method over the external surface of the blade now the operating gas temperature will be somewhat around 1200 kelvin so we cannot simply send air that is uh, at room temperature for cooling purpose so if that happens one side of the blade will be at very extreme temperature that is extreme hot temperature and other side of the blade will be at extreme cold temperature which may cause a very strong range of uh, thermal difference so what uh, we are we have to do is we have to heat the normal room temperature air to an operating cooling air temperature for instance if the operating temperature of the gas turbine is 1200 kelvin we have to increase the cooling air temperature to 800 or 900 kelvin so that the temperature difference between the cooling air and the operating gas is uh, somewhat optimized so that it can extract proper temperature from the operating gas so how is that done it is done using secondary air path secondary air path is the path that supplies coolant air for the blade as well as it heats the coolant air to the optimized design coolant air temperature so in front of you is the secondary air path geometry this portion of the geometry is uh, the compressor section the rotor side of the compressor section and this portion is the turbine section and in the middle is the combustion chamber so air enters at various inlets that are uh, given as per the design for example we have an inlet here then here then we have an inlet here and at the exhaust will be somewhere here exit will be somewhere here so during this operation what will happen is air will be entering into the inlet it will be traveling throughout these passages here and when traveling these passages the uh, temperature of the air gets increased and it is being sent into the the extra heat from the operating gas it cools the turbine blades it mixes up with the operating gas and it cools the turbine blades this is a zoomed uh, image of the secondary air path of the compressor section this is the turbine section here you can notice that air enters through the seals here and it is been injected here this is where the blade will be present 
and either by film cooling or uh, any other method the blades will be cooled turbine blade cooling this is just an overview of how turbine blade cooling is done there are new methods that have been uh, researched and implemented like matrix cooling and so on we will see it in another video thank you